Okay, so, well, good evening everyone. What a day. What, we don't even talk about weather being hairdressers, as you know, but I've just got to mention it. Who's got their heating on tonight? Because we I've have. got my heating on now. I'm <laughs> I'm Hands, up. Hands up and send us some hearts wherever you are on your emojis at the bottom and you can share this video if you like because we've got some lovely friends here with us tonight. The usual Emma. Say hi Emma. Hi. <laughs> and we've got tonight our lovely friend Karen Kelly, who's an author and she's a podcaster Hi, as well. And what else do you do, Karen? What I don't do at the moment. Well, I'm a teacher. I'm homeschooling at the moment, which I feel really, really clever. But I keep going over my daughter's shoulder, going over to Google to think I'm really intelligent and I'm not really. So helping a bit <laughs> with homeschooling. Um, yeah, I've got uh, a synopsis for another book, which is a different genre, and I really want to get started with it, but I just can't find the time. Uh, I've been writing some ditties for a menopausal character that I created a couple of years ago, which is called Menopause, and it's a real stressed out character based on me when I'm go as I'm going through it, but it's a fun, a fun character. So I've been busy, I've been really busy. I have you. So am I all right to tell everybody about your book then before yeah. we tell everybody oh, about how, how we met? I mean, I, I know between the three of us now, this is a beautiful combination tonight because uh -huh. we're always, I know you just mentioned it, Karen. Emma is always saying it because we're special. So am I. But yeah. we, don't, we don't always appreciate what talents we have. No, do we? Because we just are so busy with all these things going on in our heads. But um, if I may just let you into a little secret, um, Karen and I met when we were 16. We were oh 15, my God. 16, I oh think my maybe. God. And I was sent to a finishing school because. Of course just... you were. <laughs> <laughs> you need to finish it off. <laughs> but then so oh. were you. <laughs> So we were the baddies in the class, I think, but we, we, we were sent to, but it was actually a model agency as well, wasn't it? And I wasn't even thinking that, yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And it was a model agency from Chester, and they were actually doing interviews at the Crew Arms Hotel, and you had to get through an interviewing procedure in order to be interviewed in this room. Do you remember that? No. Do you not? Well, I remember no. very much. I've got no memory. I remember everything about that time. And so, of course, we went, we uh, sort of embarked on a, on a, did you go, Emma, were you at the finishing school? Did you, did, did, were you, because you were, you were a bit of a naughty girl, weren't you, as well as me? <laughs> and yes. Karen. School. I've never heard of it. Oh, haven't you? So, okay, no. so. I just, thought I, was, I just thought I was going to a model agency, and my parents never told me it was finishing school. <laughs> <laughs> did they not? Oh gosh. Well, we did learn to, we, we learned so many lovely things there. We learned how to, we learned about deportment. We learned about how to apply makeup, even though we were sort of both interested in that sort of thing anyway. Yeah. And we um, also learned about um, how to behave and how to be in front of people and model on catwalks and photographic work anyway, yeah. we did a few a few jobs in and around Chester and uh yeah which introduced I don't know about you Karen but it introduced me into a whole world of adulthood and being around beautiful women yeah. which also encouraged gorgeous men too yeah yeah, yeah. so we <laughs> We were quite complaining. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were sort of um, we were sort of introduced to this whole new world at such a young age, and so consequently, uh, at school I got quite bored and into trouble, and you know failed at everything. But I was good at my modelling, and, and that's how Karen and I had this sort of new uh, relationship, didn't we? We ended up holidaying together. Oh my God, Benidorm wasn't it? Was it Benidorm the first one? No. I don't remember. Benidorm or... Malaga. Malaga and Benidorm, I think. Yeah, yeah. So you can imagine. <laughs> Emma, what was your first holiday away with your mates? Oh, Do you remember? Christ. I've not really done a lot of that type of thing, to be honest with you. I'm a bit no. boring. <laughs> okay. like, I, don't, I wouldn't have thought that. Just by looking at it, I thought you parted. No, not, oh. at all. not at all. It was like when, when Molly was born, 
um, I went I went with the girls um, to Centre Parks and it was actually the girls that I met in hospital when I had Molly and we'd all like had our babies and we went to Centre Parks. That's the first, I've never done anything like that before. I've never been abroad with friends. I've never done anything like that. I love Centre Parks. So I'm really boring. boring. Yes, Emma. Well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this week's um, topic is all about pain to purpose, which really means is what pain have you been through, which has given you a purpose to carry on, or we've looked at it in another way of, um, you know, when you've been persecuted, what's been the provision that it's given you, because you've just been through such an awful time. And um, I think, you know, in terms of what, what, I mean, what got you into being, writing your own book, Karen? which we'll carry on talking about here because I've got it. Yeah, Lily, in my journey. Well, yeah. it's funny because I started writing, God, before my son was born, and he's 17 this year, and I used to just write short stories and things on a very old computer, probably been now. And, um, and then one story just carried on and carried on. Then I might have left it for years and gone back to it. And, you know, my own career took off. I was cabin crew at the time, so I was travelling everywhere. But every few years, I'd dabble back into the book again. And then people would be like, oh, God, that book, and tossing and rolling their eyes at me. And, I, and it really, I, it's like they weren't taking me seriously. Do you know what I mean? It was really frustrating because I was on my own path as well, uh, on my own journey as such. And, uh, and I knew I would always finish Lillian White's journey. I knew I would, but I just didn't have the time to do it. So when I, it kind of pushed me on, really, to think, do you know what? I know I'm going to finish this book. I might be talking about it and full of the talk and nothing's happening at the moment, but I feel you know, it was it was gonna be done and it was done. Good yeah. 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 So I can you know, obviously you've just mentioned there about do I mean, do am I right in thinking all three of us have never really been taken seriously? <laughs> what well, you do you know what? Do you know, <laughs> it? you know what you're talking before about sometimes can be a bit silly and people don't take you seriously but we've actually got skills i do believe that you can be a jack of all trades and master of them all as well you're not just put on this planet to do one thing you've got this whole soul yeah. of personality that can go in any direction you want to if you've got the passion for it that's how i think personally what about you em i totally agree with you there karen i think um I think that's it. You, you kind of like perhaps focus on one thing that you really love, but then, yeah, you kind of like can dagger into doing different things. Definitely agree with you on that one. Yeah. Yeah. And I know in our industry, you know, one of our pains is standing all day. <laughs> You know, like yeah. you being being on cabin crew, Karen, you know, and modelling and, and all the industries that everybody is in. You know, we, we did a topic on the talent last week and then industry the week before and, you know, all these new things that we've found. Mm. Um, so there's pain in everybody's job, isn't there? Mm. And, and then what does it bring? What purpose does it bring for you? Um, you've gone into your own business. Karen, mm. you've written a, a book and another one on the way, and you're in business as well, aren't you? So, you know, yeah. what, what, I wonder what, where the fight is that sort of leads us into doing such a purposeful thing for others because we've been either silly or, you know, people don't take us seriously because we're always saying, oh, I'm going to write a book because that was what happened with myself. You know, I got to the point that what I was sick to death of my saying, one day I'm gonna write a book. Oh my God, I could write a book about this. I could, I could, mm. I could, and then I did. And then suddenly I thought, well, hang on a minute. How can you write a book if you're dyslexic? How can you write a book if you were truant? How if you were told that you would never go anywhere in life, would it become a purpose? And I think sometimes that reverse psychology, I don't know, what do you think? Well, the thing is, don't you think that when you're younger, though, all the things you're saying that people might have portrayed about you, you grow out of those things. And you believe, you know that you, you don't believe that of yourself anymore because you kind of mature, don't you? Do you know what I mean? A little bit. Come on, you do a little right, bit. Yeah, and yeah, you, yeah. yeah. I mean, we wouldn't have done this. Yeah, but what I'm saying is as well, you don't really care what those people think anymore because you believe in yourself a bit more, I think. As you get mm. older, things that, 
were important to you maybe in your 20s and 30s, you can brush aside a bit better, can't you? Where when you get to more 40s, really, well, I'm 50 now, over 50 now, you just don't care the same. And you do concentrate on what's important. Mm. And, you know, and, and I think, I think what I've met, I've certainly met people along the way who are very similar to me. Like, I think we're similar, Sal. We've naturally got that drive and ambition inside us. We're just naturally there. And mm. if we really want to go for something, we just go for it. And there's a lot of people like that. There's also a lot of people that would say, just get a proper job. You might have heard that in your life quite a few times. I don't know. You know, when did you stop the hairdress and stop that gap? You know. Emma, I know you've got quite a good story about get a proper job, haven't you? Gee whiz. So my daughter um, said to her dad, uh, who obviously we're not together anymore. Um, she said about going into hairdressing and he said, no, you're not. You get a proper job. Now, the ironic thing is I met him when I first went into hairdressing and he was a hairdresser. So for him to say that is shame on him. So sorry for bad mouthing. I do apologize for bad mouthing, but I have a proper job and I have skills and I have learned so much over the years, so many different things that I've, I've said to myself, I really want to do that. And, and it's Sally that said, do it then. And I have, and I've done it and I've, I've achieved things and I'm, I'm actually really proud of myself. So mm. good for you. <laughs> It's so I think maybe, maybe, you know, we have to get ourselves into peak state, don't we? When we're, when we're on a day, when we're maybe being pained, it means that we have to take a grip, get real, get on with it and, and just, you know, dust your feathers down, put a bit more lipstick on yeah, and strut it's out and get that. there. Yeah. So some of the other pains I know that some people have faced during lockdown as well is the fact that financial problems and if I can just share a story with you um, you know Karen and I uh, embarked on a trip to Malaga that we just mentioned about when we were very young and I think you won it didn't you Karen? Did yeah you won it was a five-star apartment and all we had to do was get get our flight you remember? Yeah and we ended up in in, in Ben El Medina in this beautiful complex and um, it was 16 degrees centigrade. It was, freezing. <laughs> it was freezing and we were freezing and we were in our summer gear trying to get a tan at 16 yeah. degrees. The water was freezing, the ocean was freezing and we ran out of money, didn't we? Yeah, we had no food. We were so We hungry. had no food. I remember we had some crackers and we were sharing them out and we had Lindsay and Andrew, I think, with us as well, didn't we? Yeah. So when have you been in a situation where you've absolutely been broke? This is all about pain, remember, and what purpose it's given us. What, what did we do? So what we did was we bought crackers and we shared them <laughs> with cream cheese. And then on the last day, I don't know if you remember this, Karen, but we actually bought a loaf of bimbo bread. Well, I had to cooked bimbo bread because I couldn't remember what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I so think you know it you... brought back the memories. Yeah, so those of you that have, have gone on to a trip to the, sort of the Costa del Sol and last landed at Malaga and taken that drive along the coast through Benal Medina, Tomalinos, <laughs> isn't it? Just before you leave the airport, I'm sure you've all seen the Bimbo Bread Factory. And I mean, crikey, we were 16, so what was that? 30 More than that. <laughs> years ago. And yeah. every time I go past that factory, I always remember the loaf uh -huh. of bimbo bread on the last night of the holiday. You know, when you go out for dinner, usually when you're on your last night of holiday, you get, oh, you get bimbo <laughs> bread. Well, I've got a story for you if you want to listen to this story. So um, what year was it? I think I was in my 20s, early 20s, and I went to Crete. Had a great time in Crete, but only a few days into the holiday, we set fire to our apartment and we had to pay for the damages with all our spending money. We had no money, no food. The curtains set on fire. I was, I was just cooking a pot of noodles. I didn't know what to do and I put it on the stove. Set fire to everything. The curtains, oh my goodness. The owners Ooh. came down, went crazy. But they realised that we were actually quite nice girls. We weren't drunk and, and being, you know, 
outrageous. We generally had an accident with a pot of noodle. I mean, who cooked a pot of noodle on the stove? So um, we paid for the apartment, but the owner felt so sorry for us. They took us out for ice cream and took us out for dinner. And everyone knew, all the holiday makers knew that it was us three girls that had set fire to this apartment. So that's when we were completely broke on holiday. We sort of took it home. <laughs> oh dear. I think, you know, obviously, I mean, Emma and I work together all the time and we're often in scrapes, aren't we, of things, mm. not necessarily financially up until now, you know, but, but in terms of, um, you know, being a liability and burning things and setting fire to things, you know, we've shared many experiences in we just ruin everything. And, uh, you know, my children only know that dinner's cooked when <laughs> the smoke alarm goes off. No, the smoke alarm goes off, so all the kids, like, well, they used to come running in because they knew that was dinner time, whereas now they've grown up, but it still goes off anyway, so, um, yeah. so that pain there again is another example of turning into a purpose, and I was challenged to bake some cakes for um, Axed for Africa, which is my friend's charity, um, Lily Newman, her name is, and it's Cakes of Kindness. And I'm like, I cannot bake. So we, I thought, no, come on, I'll give yourself, give, you know, have a go. So I did it um, and it didn't burn one, but oh, I only yeah. baked 99. Is that I had 99 to, cakes? 99 cakes, Karen. Oh, but I, I, I never burned any of them, and but I had to make another batch because I had to make 100. So that meant that we got a load left over. Did you see my video that I recorded a couple of weeks ago? Because I used to sell one of my cakes. I bake amazing cakes. I can't cook. My husband lost his taste and smell. I'm not sure if it was COVID. None of us know. Three months ago, it's not returned. So luckily, he thinks all my food just tastes, well, tastes bland anyway. But I can bake great cakes. And one of them is a coconut cake. And I actually put, I did a demonstration a few weeks ago. So anyone can follow, follow that file. It's really easy. So you need to have a go at that. It's a coconut cake. Ooh, and a few like, people have contacted me and they've made it and they've said oh my goodness it's delicious because i put all the instructions out and i thought them through it so you have to have a look and let me know if you can bake it oh we will my what? signature cake <laughs> karen i don't know why but yeah. I'm, you know what i'm still not convinced <laughs> <laughs> you know, really it's, it's, this pain this pain that i get you know it doesn't change. Remember, we were just a liability together all the that time. Was a long like, time you... ago. I know, but I'm still getting the feeling that it's still <laughs> funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so talking help about baking, no, talking about baking, Emma. You know, we've we've um, had cakes in the shop, haven't we? And people bring things in, but today, um, well, no, sorry, the cakes I made, some of the cakes I made, I actually decorated them with cream cheese I didn't actually make that I bought that already made because I just couldn't do it far too hard I knew it'd be lumpy or like water <laughs> so I bought it and I decorated some of the cakes with squashies and today I managed to get a hold of something absolutely delish so squashy oh, wow. do you know what where's that from it's not it's air freshener Oh, I've got my glasses on. It's oh. air freshener, guys. Seriously. On. So, Emma, I'm going <laughs> to give you some to drop on your lap. Go. And, oh, I've got it. <laughs> Yay. So, we can have squashy, squashy air freshener. I can't wait. So, we're going to be able to spray it in the salon when we get back, along with all the things that we spray as well. So, uh, anyway, so could you give us another example, either of you, of when you've been in, a, uh, is that wine now? Rum and Coke. Ooh, what pained you to pour that? <laughs> I've been deck. <laughs> hey. I've been painting my bedroom, so I thought I deserved it. Yeah. Good I've got another tale, a cook, another baking tale, for it's um, years ago, I, well, God, years ago, I was 22. Remember when I used to run the Union Pub in Nantwich? Yes, I do. In the bed and breakfast. Well, I, I do. Really, <laughs> yeah. Can you believe I it? Can you believe it? <laughs> and I remember, I used to work with this chef 
he was a very scary chef, but he was he had a big heart, but he was very, very scary. And um <laughs> had to defrost some bread. Now I wasn't obviously I didn't know anything about cooking back then, we're just taking over this business. And I put this bread in the microwave to defrost for about 10 minutes, 15 <laughs> minutes, and I'd left it. All this smoke was bellowing out of the kitchen. It had to be closed okay. down. We couldn't use it. And it was like, oh, my God. So that was pain. I learned from it. And then never again. Every time I defrost bread, now I think about that story. Bellowing <laughs> yellow smoke. I had to get a new microwave, clean all the walls. So, so what pain does, does uh, Lillian go through then when she... Lily when she goes through a lot of pain, I mean, she, there's a lot of drama in the book, but what's lovely about it is you can really warm to her. You'll relate to her if you need it, Sally, you really will. You can warm to her because everything seems to go wrong. She's always the girl that, that I don't want to ruin the story, but things go wrong for her and other people's lives seem to be better, you know what I mean? But she overcomes it. Oh. Is, is, who is Lillian White? Who is Lillian White? She's fictitious. <laughs> you see, I always twist stories and, you know, squeeze the life out of them, kick them around a bit and change them. You've but never so changed one bit in all this time that we've known each other. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. So, and also, I'd just like to share as well, we talked about pain to purpose. And uh, I know, Emma, you remember you met Dr. Ava, didn't you? Um, mm. last week. This is Dr. Ava's book and um, it's I... all about there's some real compelling true stories in there about, you know, um, how women have overcome such dreadful things like rape. Um, mm. We're going to be hearing mm. tomorrow um, from, from, you know, two people, totally different parts of the world. Um, they're going to be sharing some of their stories with us as well. But uh, I'd also like to just mention my friend Linda has appeared in this as well with her story and how her pain has become a purpose. And so what we thought what we might do is challenge our clients that have been watching and our friends. And we've had loads of people, haven't we? Loads of comments, you know, mm -hmm. just by... You know, we've missed our clients, as you know, over this lockdown yeah. time. And we've just felt that this has been a really good way to connect with everybody so that it can still see us. So mm. what we're really thinking about is taking yourself back to times when, you know, we, some of the stories that you may have from, from a child or, you know, when you've recently got married with children and what, you know, what it's, it's bought for you and indeed what do you think that you know it's a good exercise for um you and your family and your children to write down some of the pain that you've gone through during this time now and what it's going to bring you out on the other side like with the new talents that you've that you've learned i don't know about your two i mean i know emma with your daughter molly you know she's done incredibly well with her young her enterprise hasn't she yeah Can you just tell us about some of the things that she's been doing yeah she's um so molly uh, i think a lot of you know she's a she's training to be a pediatric nurse so she's she's up in manchester so she's working hard she's at the children's hospital today um on a and e and then you know she'll come home and on her days off she's studying all her uni work she does her she's got her tropic business the same as uh sally and myself um and um yeah she just she's she's a real credit she's a good kid she's she works hard and i'm dead proud of her she's i i, I said this the other day when she put something um i don't know she'd done this video about her tropic products and i'm just like wow what how how do you how do you absorb all that information? I, it, I wish I could do it. I just cannot do it. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's lovely to, to think that she's mine. And I'm, I'm really, I am really proud of her. I know we're all proud of our kids, but yeah. I think because I can't do these things that she can do, it just makes you think, um, yeah, she's, she's done well. Bless her. Yeah. And, 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 Lockdown has been a real eye-opener for me because I, I was actually stuck in Australia when England went into a uh, lockdown. I couldn't get back. Really? I'd, gone, I'd gone for a holiday, a planned holiday, 
and up until the day we were going, it was all fine. It was only a, it was only a two week holiday because I've I've, connect, I've got connections there over, over the last thirty years. But um, we, my, I had a death in the family. We went over to support a relative, and then literally within days of being there, it, I can't I can swear, but the beef hit the fan. And all flights were cancelled, so the holiday was ruined. All our plans had gone, and we were just trying to get flights home, and we couldn't. But when I got, you know, we were obviously FaceTiming back to the UK, and the kids are robust, aren't they? They just get on with it. They get on with the schoolwork. Yes, they couldn't see the friends, and now obviously things are slightly changing. But I'm really proud of how they just knuckle down. You know, we're having more family dinners together. Um, and doing our exercise together in the garden with my son and going for a run and doing boxing or whatever and cycling with my daughter. Yeah. Things that we, I'm not saying we would never do them, but not as frequently. And I think you really bond as a family. And I just hope that going forward, everyone that had those same experiences can, can keep hold of some of that. Because we are quite, we're quite good at just falling back into world routines, aren't we? So maybe yeah. whether it's a year, whatever, 18 months, six months, if we do ever get back to that sort of normality, will we all fall back into, you know, living a life just mm. in the night sort of thing? Mm. So, and I know that you've mentioned that you're doing your, you used to teach aerobics, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, and Zumba, oh, yeah. yeah, Zumba. Yeah, so, and Emma, you share that same passion with, keeping mm. fit don't you because i know i was watching the um, the roman the bridge being taken down this morning to go away and be repaired and emma was waiting to do her uh, workout and i'm like oh my gosh if anybody's been dedicated to exercise you two have i know <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do emma do you run or do you what what sort of exercise do you do I, I used to do a lot of running um like half marathons and like all different stuff like that but um I can't run anymore because I had an operation on my knee but um I, I do I, I'm a member at a local gym so I do circuit classes um use the gym obviously not at the moment but like you know the yeah. gym and then I've got um I've like made like a little gym area here yeah I think so everyone's having it's been most of them Sally hasn't she's shaking her head no. <laughs> yoga all sorts it's been good fun love it well, I've, I've only ever done one half marathon and it was a few years ago and I thought I did enough training when I finished the marathon I thought I was going to die I got yeah. into bed I was in a caravan I got into bed and I woke up hours later with my pin, with, with pin still on you know my top on with my number on <laughs> I think I passed out. I, I could feel every organ closing down because I've just completely killed my body. So I'll never do a half marathon again. <laughs> Which one did you do? I did the Abbasock half and then I've done the Abbasock 10. I can do a 10k, not, not fine, but yeah. I wouldn't do half a marathon again. I just know oh. my body would do a like That's hard, aren't they? They are yeah. hard. Do you know, my uh, daughter, she, her friend has been doing some uh, exercise classes, Jess, and um live and she, i've watched isla go for it with her and i am just so impressed with her commitment her consistency mm -hmm. continuity all the things that we love about our business as well is you know to keep, in fact with these these chat shows as well what started off to be a yeah. bit of a laugh have ended up becoming what right, we've yeah. always wanted to do right yeah. book be on telly even though it's not the telly that <laughs> <laughs> we thought it might be um then but it's still you know you can still have these things on your telly anyway can't you yeah. anyway mm -hmm. so well we've got half an hour on now i can't believe where the time has gone so i'm just going to remind you about this book which is by karen kelly our dear friend karen and so proud of you when i saw this i thought oh my god i've got to buy that even though i'm dyslexic <laughs> is there an audio of it karen well, no, there isn't. No, I was going to do a podcast on it. I'm not sure um, because it's actually really expensive to do an audio. I mean, well, we're talking yeah. thousands of pounds, thousands. And I'm just not sure if people want to hear my northern voice reading it out. So I don't know. Have thought oh, about it. I think so. And what I might do then is plug it in Australia tomorrow. So no, we're 
I will. I will if we can get on and get that sorted. So, um, yeah, Karen Kelly, you can buy it in bookshops or it is downloadable, isn't it, on Kindle? And Yeah, it's on Kindle. It's in Landry's Bookshop. It's in um, Waterstones and Crew. You can order it from, yeah, quite a lot of the major stores. It, it is in Australia, actually. You can get it in Australia. Thanks. Okay, well, congratulations. And Emma, we'll see each other again in the morning when we've got Lynn joining us and my lovely BFF from Australia, who I went to school with, who we're going to be sharing some funny stories about being suspended. So, on that note, <laughs> leave you and say. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, Karen, for joining us. I hope you'll come on again another time. Definitely, let me know. Okay. Let me know. Um, I'll yeah, see you in the morning, Anne. In the morning. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.